Now we present Herbert Marshall as the man called X. The Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by... Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Science discovered it. You can prove it. No unpleasant aftertaste when you smoke Chesterfields. The biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered this fact. Of all cigarettes tested, Chesterfield, and only Chesterfield, leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. You can prove it. Smoke a pack of Chesterfields. They're always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. And Chesterfield is the cigarette that leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Science discovered it. You can prove it. Buy Chesterfields today. <laughs> startling news stunned official Washington. If true, it meant the destruction of two full years of top-secret diplomatic and military work, that the entire fate of Western Europe was trembling on the brink of destruction. But an hour after the discovery was made, when a telephone rang in a suite at the Hotel Vendôme in Paris, the man who answered it had no foreboding of the responsibility that was about to be his. Hello? Hello? You, Thurston? That's right, who's there? Slade, at the American Embassy. Can you and the Chief get over here? What's up, Slade? Operation Zero. Oh, uh, we'll be right there. But that's incredible, Slade. Incredible or not, Chief. Two of the boys in Washington, our number one experts on Operation Zero, have disappeared off the face of the earth. And we've got to find them again before it's too late. Before they wind up in Moscow. Who are they, Slade? James Everest, David McDonald. McDonald? That's right. He's an old friend of yours, isn't he, Ken? Yes, Chief, and there's one thing I bet my life on. David McDonald's no traitor. Well, that's not what the facts say, Thurston. What do they say? McDonald and Everest left Washington en route to London. They were going to clean up the last unfinished details on Operation Zero, the Atlantic Defense Pact plans for defending Europe in the event of... Uh, of unprovoked aggression. Yeah, so? So they never arrived. They left the planet Shannon Island. Haven't been seen since. When was that, Slade? Twelve hours ago. If they're not taking the plans to Russia, we've got nothing to worry about. But if they are, well, we've got to find out. Yeah. But how? They've got a 12-hour start. They could enter Russian territory anywhere from the Baltic to the Adriatic Sea. I think we can narrow it down, Chief. MacDonald has a small chalet in France at Montigny. He spends his summer vacations there. Mm, I'm afraid your friend McDonald's not on a vacation trip this time, Thurston. Nor is Marshal Petrov. Petrov? The Politburo's military commander? Yeah. We heard yesterday that he just arrived in Berlin, remember? Well, uh, what's that got to do with this? With McDonald and Everest taking the plans of Operation Zero to Moscow? Suppose I let you know, Slade. From Montigny, France. <laughs> Why so surprised? You knocked, didn't you? 
Yes, but I wasn't expecting to find you here, Miss... Um... I'm Anna Werner. Miss Werner? And if you weren't expecting me, then who? Well, this chalet belongs to a man named David MacDonald, or didn't you know? Oh, sure, but it's a cinch MacDonald wouldn't be in Montini now. Why not? Do I really have to tell you, Mr. X? Huh? <laughs> Surprise number two? Oh, frankly, yes. Well, good. It's always easier for me to work on a guy who's a little off balance. Just what kind of work did you have in mind? Oh, I've got lots of answers for that one. Suppose we talk him over inside, hmm? Maybe I can come up with another surprise or two. Oh, I bet you can. Okay. What about those answers? Well... I'm a freelance newspaper girl, and I got a tip in Paris that McDonald might be wearing a red wolf skin under his sheep's clothing with Operation Zero in one of the pockets. So I came down here to check. And what have you found? You. McDonald's private hangar out at the airport, empty. That makes the tip sound 24 carat. Uh, you don't like the story, hmm? Should I? Well, sure, we're going to work together. And they tell me at the airport that Max got a four-hour start on us. We better get going. Not we, Miss Werner. Oh, Okay. I'll stick around for a while. I've got a hunch. Hmm. I wonder. I'll let you know. Yes, do that little thing. Hello? This is Mr. Pagan Zelschmidt speaking. Oh. I'd like to talk to Mr. Thurston, please. Pagan. That's right. Uh, Pagan Zelschmidt speaking. I'd like to... Oh, oh, it's you. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Where the devil are you? What do you want? Boy, have I ever got hot stuff news for you, Mr. X. A real scoop on that McDonald guy. Believe me, this will knock your head off. Ready? Uh -oh. Hey, what happened there, Mr. X? Sorry, but I did promise you another surprise, didn't I? Hey. Mr. X. Mr. Thurston, do you hear me? What happened? Hey, Mr. X. Oh. Wake up, Mr. Oh. X. Please wake up. Oh, why do you have to stay subconscious uh, like that? Uh, Wake up. Uh, what's the up, big on? That's right, Mr. X, that's right. Boy, uh, what happened to you anyways? Uh, the girl, where is she? A girl? You uh, mean a girl slugged you like that? Uh, what was she, a female wrestler? Oh, never mind. How'd you get here? Last thing I remember was talking to you on the phone. Oh, that was from the airport. When I heard something funny over the telephone, I, I beat it right out here. All right, big on. What was that red-hot news you were talking about? The chief sent me after you with it. It's about that big-shot Russian military guy, uh, Marshal... Uh, Pet Petrov? That's him, that's uh. right. The chief said to tell you that Petrov left Berlin uh, on an aeroplane trip a little while ago. He didn't know where to, but but it was someplace southwest in Germany. Southwest in Germany. That's right. I told you I had really... Does that mean something? Could mean that MacDonald and Everest are heading for the Russian zone of Germany. And Petrov's intending to meet him. So what? There's hundreds of miles of borders to the Russian zone. He could be meeting them anywhere. That's right, but I have a hunch that three people know where he is. Know where it is. Everest, MacDonald, and a girl named Anna Werner. Mademoiselle Werner, oui, monsieur. The lovely mademoiselle departed from this airport in a chartered plane not ten minutes ago. Did she file a flight plan? Pardon, monsieur? Well, did she tell you where she was going? Oh, mais oui. Her destination was Le Havre. Le Havre. But that's not in Germany, Mr. Thurston. It's, it's on the British Channel or something. You sure that's where she said she was going? Mais certainement, monsieur. I remember most distinctly. A very stubborn young lady, mademoiselle. I warned her that she could never succeed in reaching there. Why not? There was not enough fuel in the airplane, monsieur. That is why not. Oh. At the most, she could fly about 300 kilometers. But she would not listen. A most stubborn young lady. She will never arrive at La Havre. I see, but if you'll get me a flight map of Western Europe and a pair of dividers, I think I can show you where she will arrive. There it is, Sonneberg, Germany. The only town in the Russian zone within a radius of 300 kilometers. And that's where you think she's going, Mr. Thurston, eh? Following those McDonald and Everest characters? It's the nearest Russian territory, and it's directly southwest of Berlin. Hey, that's the direction Marshal Petrov was flying. Treaty figures, eh, Mr. X? Worth finding out. Huh? 
Oh, but we can't go flying behind iron curtains, Mr. X. They'd shoot us down like clay ducks. If you don't believe me, ask Grisha. Who's Grisha? A cousin of mine. He, he lives in Neustadt, in the American zone, right across the border from Zonenberg. Good. Let's pay him a visit. Sure. Uh, huh? What for? Well, he's a Zellschmidt, isn't he? So what's got that to do with it? Pagan, don't you know you can always depend on a Zellschmidt? Yeah. <gasps> But I'm operating a strictly legitimate business, Herr Thurston. I don't know how to smuggle people across the border into Zonneberg. You sure, Grisha? I swear it by the father of my father of my father, Herr no. Thurston. <laughs> He's a liar, all right. That proves it. Pagon, oh, you wound me deeply, my beloved cousin. What I say is true. Smuggling watches, American cigarettes, coffee into Zonneberg. Eh, I do these things, yes. But people, never. Strictly legitimate business. Yes, oh, sure. exactly. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do for you, my friend. Oh, too bad. I thought that this, um, might... Uh, hey, that, that's money you're showing. That? Let me see. Twenty. Forty. Fifty. Do you know something, Cat Thurston? I've just gone into another business. Strictly illegitimate. <laughs> There is the farmhouse, Herr Thurston. The two men who arrived in Neustadt just before you did are in there now. Thanks, Grisha. Wait here. Come, Pega. You think those two men are McDonald's and Everest? It figures. Those pillboxes a couple of hundred yards down the road at the entrance to the Russian zone. They'll probably wait until it's dark and then make a break for it. So why don't we call in the police or, or the APs or something? I... Uh... Hey... Hey, that car coming from the farmhouse, it's heading right Off for the road, us. Pagan, fast, off the road. <laughs> hey, so what's the matter with those jokers? They tried to run us down. Everest and MacDonald, heading for the Russian zone. Come on. Let me have the wheel, Grisha. But Let test. me have it. What are you doing now? I'm going to try and stop that car before it reaches the border. Ooh, but the Russian guards have Thurston. They'll never allow you to You've do that. You've got to force that car off the road before they can stop us. You know something, Mr. Rex? They stopped us. Yeah, looks like MacDonald and Everest made the Russian zone. With Operation Zero. We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Every day, you hear more and more about an incredibly fast way to relieve the pains of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. It's Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Ask for Anison at any drug counter. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Two of the top men in Washington have mysteriously disappeared. Ken Thurston, the man called X, has trailed them to Neustadt, Germany, in an effort to determine if they're carrying the Atlantic Pact defense plans into the hands of the Russians. But his attempt to stop them from crossing the border has been halted by the chattering burp guns of the Russian border guards. So they made it, Ken. Looks like it, Chief. Oh, it's too bad. Well, there's nothing we can do about those plans now. 
I'm not too sure about that. What do you mean? Marshal Petrov flew down to meet him, all right. Pagon's cousin, Grisha, verified that for us. Well, what of it? I have a hunch Petrov will fly them to his headquarters in Berlin and still direct to Moscow. He'll want the honor of taking those plans to the Kremlin himself. Uh, could be. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad someone can't get into the Russian zone before he gets the plans from MacDonald and Everest. Oh, of course not, no. And with all the dope the Bureau must have on Petrov's headquarters, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the fact that we know Petrov's got a secret suite on the 12th floor of the Felsenhoff Hotel, that isn't a bit of help to anyone under the circumstances. Not a bit. And we probably know where to get some inside help at the Felsenhoff, too. G2. So what? Yep. Well, looks like I better get back to Paris. Yeah, uh, looks like it, Kim. Um, you don't mind if I take my time, dear Chief, look around the country a bit first? Oh, no, no, not at all. No, you've got a vacation coming. Take your time. Take plenty of time. Thanks, Chief, I will. Be seeing you. Hello, Miss Werner. Oh, well, fancy meeting you here, Mr. Thurston. How'd and you in find... a phone booth, of all things. How did you like the eavesdropping? Oh, it was excellent. These phone booth walls are paper thin. Yeah. And how lucky for you. Is it? Yes. You see, I am your only hope of getting to Berlin in time. Or didn't you know your plane had been sabotaged? No, I didn't, but there'll be others. Oh, I'm afraid not. I made it my business to be sure that no others were available. You're a busy little bee, aren't you? Well, that's how bees make honey. And I expect to make a good deal of honey syndicating this yarn when it's all over. So you're still trying to play newspaper woman? Of course. Wasn't that tap on the head you gave me a little out of character? Not at all. You were obviously determined not to let me go along with you, and I was just as determined to get the story. Even if I had to... What's the cliché? Go to any lengths to get it? And you expect me to believe that, too? I'm afraid you'll have to, Mr. X. If you expect to get to Berlin on time, well... Okay, Anna, let's go. Uh, look, Mr. X, so that cookie Anna flew us into Berlin. Uh, that, that don't mean we have to go into the Russian zone with her. We are not pagan. <laughs> well, that, that's a relief. We're going in alone. Oh, sure, that's the ticket. We're going... Alone? Yeah, we got some business with the assistant manager of the Fields of Hop Hotel. Name of Vladimir Grigorsky. I am certain that you will find these accommodations all that you desire, comrade. However, the tenants on this floor, particularly Marshal Petrov, are very sensitive to any form of disturbance. That's why I bring you up in the service elevator. You understand, comrade? I understand, comrade Grigorsky. Da, I was certain that you would. So, the 12th floor. This way, please. At the far end of this corridor is Marshal Petrov's private suite. This room is one he reserves for special guests. So, now I have done all that I can do, Mr. Thurston. I believe that the American McDonald will come to this room. But here, one can be certain of nothing. From now on, your actions must be your own responsibility. Thanks, Bigorsky. I'll take over from oh, here. Uh, one more thing. Uh, what about your man, Zeltschmidt? I can keep him hidden for perhaps an hour, but then the manager comes on duty. Then an hour will have to be enough. If I'm not out of here by then, get Pagan back into the Allied zone. You'll phone what's happened to the chief. Very well, Mr. Thurston. Uh, as you wish. I, uh, I should like to say something, but <laughs> what is there to say except perhaps uh, good luck? Ken! 
that's right. What the devil are you doing here? You don't need an answer to that. You're a fool. What about the plans for Operation Zero, Mac? You'll never get out of here alive. What about those plans? You should have known you'd follow me. I... Ken, I haven't got him. I didn't bring him with me. I, I couldn't. Swallowing their lying propaganda, getting sucked into their filthy, rotten scheme. What happened? It's the old story. Jim ever sold me. I was to get copies of Operation Zero, and we'd take them to the Russians. Oh, yes, I was helping to be the savior of the entire world. What changed your mind? Everest and a couple of his comrades. The night we were to leave Washington, they couldn't help boasting, and... Well, I guess I woke up. Too late then, wasn't it? Sure, yeah, sure. If I tried to break away, they'd kill me, and Everest would still be in Washington building up another sucker. This way, at least, he's been tagged for what he is, and Operation Zero is safe. Yeah. But what about you, Mac? Well, what do you think? I've stalled Petrov so far, but I'm supposed to be getting the plans now. And when he learns that I haven't got him, well, it means curtains for Everest and me. But, Ken, you, you've got to get out of here before he finds you. Suppose we both take a crack at it. The service elevator's only a few feet down the corridor. Come on. Ken, I Come tell you... Come on. Going somewhere, comrade. Petrov! If so, I would not advise you. You'd better follow that advice, boys. Comrade Petrov's an awfully quick man on the trigger. Well, Anna. Another surprise, Ken? No. You're obviously fighting a rear guard action for Everest. The only paper you could report for would be Pravda. And quite a story it will make, too. Not only have we uncovered the traitor MacDonald, but we have captured the rarest of prizes as well. The man called X. You haven't anyone yet, Petrov! <laughs> Ken, run! Run with the light! Uh. You stupid fool. Did you actually believe that you Let's could... have that gun, Pat. Let, 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 let go! Let go! Thank you, Anna. My dear. told you you were a fool, Ken. Look what it got you coming after me. Oh, things aren't too tough, Mac. Are you kidding? Me with a bullet in my side and you with your shoulder in a sling, underarm guard here at the Lemonstrasse Hospital. How tough do things have to get? Krigorski knows what went on at the hotel, but you didn't have Operation Zero with you. You'll send Peg on into the Allied Zone with the news. Okay, okay, so you did your job, but the... In- KVD's going to pick us up today and take us to Moscow, and you know what that means? They're not there yet. We've been in the hospital 24 hours. Chiefs have plenty of time to get to work on it. Oh, sure. Sure, I suppose he's going to walk right in here and take us out. I suppose... You hear that? It's the secret police. What can the chief do now? Easy, Mac, easy. Prisoners, we are from the NKVD. You are now in our custody. We have orders to transport you to Moscow. Grigorsky. And look who else. Boy, I bet you're glad to see us, eh, Mr. X? On your feet, prisoner. You have no time to waste. On your feet. Are you both able to walk, Mr. Thurston? I'm okay. What about you, mate? I can walk over live coals, Ken, if it meant getting out of here. It's a cinch. We got four secret police papers, private ambulance without waiting for downstairs. A cinch. I hope. We shall have to hurry, Mr. Thurston. We may be discovered at any moment. Oh, don't say things like that. All right, let's go. <laughs> Ambulance down, Mr. Thurston. Okay. Wait. Ken, look. They are coming toward the ambulance entrance. It's Petrov. Petrov? Mm. Uh, what do we do? We have to make a break for it. Come on. You there. Why are you running? Stop those men. They are... Come in, Come Get in, all of you. Get in. All right, Mr. Thurston, we are in. Okay, here we go. Now, 
How does it look back there? They are still about a block behind, but gaining fast. Oh, they'll catch us. They'll catch us. They'll have to hurry, Pagon. There's the American zone. Get ahead. But look, wooden barricades. I'm God. We cannot get through. I wouldn't bet on that, Grigorsky. Hang on to your hats. Oh, we're going to crash. We're going to crash. like it, Pega. Not, not all of us, Mr. Thurston. What? McDonald? Yes, he. Oh. oh, the poor guy. Well, at least he died with a clean conscience, which is more than you can say for some others back home. Others? Yes. Traitors, saboteurs, trading in American lives. Wonder how they're going to feel when their time comes. How happy they'll be when they have to face their conscience and find it black and red. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. If you own an RCA Victor television set, or if you're planning to buy one, The RCA Victor factory service contract is yours for the asking. You can be assured of top performance year after year from your RCA Victor receiver. And with RCA Victor's factory service contract, you get expert, prompt service. Replacement of any part or tube, including the picture tube, for one full year. And the best standard RCA antenna for your location. It's the only national service of its kind in television. A wonderful, practical buy. The RCA Victor Factory Service Contract. Attention electronic engineers. Right now, RCA has career openings for experienced engineers. If you're a qualified radio electronics engineer, RCA offers you lifelong opportunities. Just send a complete resume of your education and experience to Radio Corporation of America, Box 1, RCA Building, Radio City, New York. Your resume will be kept confidential. Now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Will Wright, Mary Jane Croft, Stacey Harris, Ted Von Elfs, Harry Lang, Gerald Moore, and Stephen Garay. Next week, Algiers. The Casbah, no less. And a plot that I'd like to dare you to figure out right up to the end of the story. And I warn you, you won't get any help from Leon Belasco as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is the Friday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Magnificent Montague with Monty Woolley, formerly heard on Friday, now brought to you as a Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC. NBC.